So today we're going to have a go at sketching Samuel Pepys and it is tricky. If you're, if you're only small, sketching um, like this, a portrait, is quite tricky. This will have been done by a very good artist with lots of years of practice. So I'm going to show you maybe a few little tips to make it a little bit easier. On our website we'll have a picture of Samuel Pepys both ways and the reason I've done that is if you've got some of this paper at home, this is you might find it in uh, the baking cupboard. You can get some greaseproof paper like this and you can trace over the outline. It makes it a little bit easier. Just show you a little bit, look. Using the outline, you can follow it around like this. I'll only do a little bit of it just to show you what happens. And when we take it off, we would have the outline. And then you can turn it over onto your paper and if you go along those lines on the other way, you'll notice, oops a daisy, not a good idea isn't it? That when you've gone along, it leaves an outline that you can trace. So that's a good way of doing that then. You can actually see and then you can follow along. So it's a bit of a, a good way of getting your outline on. The other way you can do it is to take your paper and if you're near a window, you can hold up your picture to a window and you can get a good outline that way too. So once you've got your outline, we can start to draw. So I've done my outline and once I've got it, it's very faint, I'm going to go over it. So just like before, I'm using either a 2B or a 4B. If you've not got these pencils at home, you can just use your ordinary pencil and for darker parts, press on a little harder. So now I've got my outline that I've traced. I can start to go over that outline now with my pencil. So I'm going to use my 2B first, just in case I do go wrong, have a rubber. Now I've got this, I'm quite happy with the shape of this outline. I'm going to fill it in a little bit. So it's much easier once you've got that outline in place. So now I've got the hair and the face shape. I'm going to do the details on the face. Still using the 2B. I'll keep checking with my picture that I'm still going the right way. So I've got the details of the face in place and now I'm going to use my two big ends to just put the collar in place and Samuel Pepys was very proud of his collars. He, he used to get them at the same place as the King. Lace collars from London. Very dark to tell on here, but this is where Samuel's hair meets his jacket. So it's a little bit hard to tell where his hair ends and where his jacket goes. I'm going to sort of guess a little bit there, I think. So now I have an outline. I can start to sharpen up those features now. So I'm going to go to the eyes. I'll just show you on a big piece of paper this eye just so you can see eyes I know it's tempting to sort of do a bit of a circle and go like this but they don't really look that shape if I look at this eye it's very 
very much this sort of shape. And in there, we've got what we call the iris and inside the iris is the pupil and the pupil looks very shiny. To make it look shiny, we do a little white circle. Then we do the pupil and then we do the iris. The best way to colour the iris in is to just make it very dark around the edge. Draw little lines, almost like the spokes of a bicycle. All the way around. And then colour in the pupil, but leave that little hole in the middle to make the eye look shiny. The eye looks more realistic. And then we can put on the eyelid and the eyebrow. So you can see that, that's what I'm going to do here now. I'm just showing you a little bit more detail. So I'm going to go around the pupil. Outline in place, I can start to use my 4B now to do some shading. So if I look at Samuel's eye, it's in a lot of shadow on this side, so his eyebrow looks like it joins onto his nose, but just the same in little hairs. Going in the direction that they grow. side to go the opposite way. And down his nose he's got a little bit of shadow here. I'm just going to put some little dashes like this. And if you look around the eyes, they look like little lines around his eyes. So using the side of my pencil. Maybe some crisscrosses here. And the same around here. A bit of shadow underneath. Some little lines. Coming across to this eye, there's a big shadow under this eye on this side. side of the eye here. This side of the nose is a shady line. And the nostril is very dark. Coming down from this eyebrow, I think this looks very strange shape. If I turned it upside down, it almost looks like a little snail with the shell on its back. It's a funny shape, the shadow coming down here. So it comes down, around the eye, and down this side. I'm just going to shade. Not pressing too hard this time. And a little bit of a crisscross shape going down here. And around the nose, very dark. It's a line that sort of comes around from his nostrils around to the corner of his mouth. So I'm going to bring that line around. And the same on the other side. Now you can use a tissue or you can use your finger just to smudge that a little bit to blend it all in. Come down his nose, a little bit of shade there, not quite so dark this time, very lightly. And then moving 
moving on to his lips. So it's like a big letter M that's been squashed flat on the top. I'm going to just shade it in lightly. around this eye, down the side of his face, Got some shading coming down. that runs down the side of his face here from under his eye but not quite as dark as this so if we look at the collar now I'm going to show you there are parts that look dark where the, the material's folded so we've got this part coming out the piece coming down. Then his collar comes up and around. ready to do hair now it's very tricky to see uh, on this picture the curls in Samuel Pepys's periwig so his periwig is what is it, exactly what is it it wouldn't be his real hair it would be a wig and the bigger the wig the more expensive it was the more important you were that's why we call people these days who are very important we call them big wigs because the bigger the wig the better but we can see some detail around the edge. So I'm going to show you just how to maybe add some details. I'm not going to do it all because it's going to take a long time. You can take your time with this, but just to show you how some of these curls come down, I'm going to add a little bit of detail. So I'm going to come around, put some curls like this around the edge. And can you see that we've got several lines? So some going this way, 
so I'm going the other way. And along at the top. And then when you're happy that you've got that filled in, what you can do then is shade in then the gaps in between. See it's quite dark around here. Or you can add details of hair like this, just to fill those gaps. And keep going. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my time with the hair now and then I'll show you a photo when I've finished. <laughs> 